All right, so that was quite an introduction of you, Vibhu. Um, before I even jump in, um, so John talked a little bit about your life before crypto. Maybe um, what did you do before crypto, in case anyone here don't know yet? Yeah, I used to build uh, retail stores in the wow. real world. Okay. And, uh, in the real world? Yeah, oh. and just before uh, Drip, uh -huh. I founded Solana Spaces, which was kind of the incubator for, for what we're doing now. Yeah. Um, so actually, uh, the reason that me and Vibu knew each other is because Orca was uh, a launch partner for Solana Spaces. And um, we were just having drinks on Saturday, and we talked about... So you guys are in an intimate conversation, uh, just with an audience, with me and Vibu. Um, and we talked about the fact that uh, last year, you were opening uh, for Breakpoint, and it was about Solana Spaces. But this year, you're opening uh, a conference tomorrow, and it's about something completely different. So what happened in the last 12 months? <laughs> what, what didn't <laughs> happen in the last 12 months? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, Salon Spaces was a really good idea, but I would uh, kind of say it was kind of a bull market idea. You know, let's go build these like palaces to ourselves mm -hmm. around the world. That was the, and onboard people into crypto. Um, and I think as the market conditions kind of changed, um, people's sentiments on crypto changed. Obviously, uh, they who should not be named were like a key, uh, you know, financial partner of ours as well. And um, yeah, basically in February, we made the decision to wind down the stores and focus on Drip, which was at the time a side project um, that we created to kind of help people onboard into, into Solana. Mm. And uh, when you decided to wind down Solana Spaces, what made you decide to keep going on Solana itself? Yeah. Um, Honestly, uh, we really felt pulled into it. Like, we had made this promise to people that we were going to deliver them art every single week, every single Wednesday. Yeah. And um, I felt like that promise was important. And by the time we were considering the decision, Drip had already grown to maybe 100,000 or so um, wallets. So we felt like, you know, there's something here and we need to explore and kind of dig in a bit more. We knew compression was coming to mainnet um, and that there was a lot of possibilities. And how many wallets does Drip have right now? Uh, I just tweeted a little bit ago. I think we just crossed 800,000. 800,000, wow. So 8x. Yeah. That's a, that's a great investment if there ever was one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so 800,000 users, um, what made them come to Drip? Because there's uh, a lot of different protocols that are onboarding users in different ways. So what do you think attracted them to your product? Yeah, well, if you're not familiar with Drip, uh, we basically partner with creators. Those can be artists, they can be prank video YouTubers, uh, they can be musicians. And we help them build a fan base. Mm. Uh, they do that on chain. Uh, and we help them drop content, media, art to that audience on chain as well. And, you know, I think uh, Drip is a really dramatically different value prop from almost everything else in crypto because it starts at free. You, can, you don't need tokens, you don't need a KYC. Um, you sign up with a phantom wallet or a backpack wallet, and uh, you start collecting. And I think we just dramatically lower the barrier to entry to crypto experiences. Uh, we kind of change the value prop a lot from, you know, maybe trading to collecting and just enjoying content the same way you would anywhere else. And that um, and and this promise that we made to keep delivering people art, uh, I think we've done a good job of fulfilling that over and over and over again uh, at quite a big scale now. Yeah. Uh, people hang around. Like we have these like incredibly rabid fan base of, of folks who show up every day to just uh, to enjoy what we're doing. And you guys just had an announcement for a partnership with Phantom, right? I think I got dropped a, a little NFT through that announcement. Mm -hmm. It's like a band or something like that. Uh, there's a, well, we did a Phantom Ghost that's uh -huh. uh, rendered it with water. Uh -huh. uh, it was made by Abby Solana, and uh, you know, Phantom and Drip have pretty similar goals, I would say, especially right now. We went through a period of intense onboarding and then intense offboarding. Uh, maybe now it's coming back just in the last couple weeks. But uh, what we noticed when we were working with Phantom in the stores and certainly over the last year is that uh, most people that come to the chain, they have no idea what to do next. Yeah. They download the wallet because someone told them to. They don't fund it. They don't do on-chain transactions, they just kind of sit on it. Mm -hmm. So Phantom and Drip started working together on ways to start introducing people to some of the easiest things you can do. 
Uh, and of course, I think Phantom's plans are to introduce people progressively to maybe more complex experiences like the things that you guys work on. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, Drip is, like I mentioned, the most accessible entry point into crypto. So I think it made a lot of sense for both them and us to figure out a way to like, have that mo magic moment that people have with Drip was happen like, instantaneously. Yeah, and that was a partnership that started when you worked on Solana Spaces, right? Because I remember Phantom had the wallet onboarding lounge uh, in the physical locations. Yeah, we, um, they've been an awesome partner. I didn't come here to shill them. I mean, we love Phantom, the team. But, um, but yeah, I mean, from very early on when we started working on the Solana stores, um, you know, we just definitely saw eye to eye on you know, getting out in front of people in disruptive ways and trying to teach them how to use um, all this amazing technology. That's cool. Um, by the way, should we take some questions from the audience later? Uh, I don't know if we really have time, but oh. we can. OK. Uh, just, just randomly, because <laughs> you guys might be, might be curious about some stuff, too. Um, OK, so Drip, uh, last, last Saturday when we were talking, you talked about uh, one of the key success uh, unlocks for Drip was finding the gem poet. Um, but I'm sure there's also other artists and creators that you're excited about. I would love to hear more about um, how you discover them and how you help them find success through, yeah. through Drip. So um, Drip is a product that really can change the lives of creators, um, not only through fan finding a fan base, but also through making money. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite examples is an artist named Designs, who um, D-E-S-I-G-N-Z. Okay. And Designs is, uh, lives in Alabama and um, lost his job during COVID as a chef and kind of wandered into crypto um, and had been like a long time artist but had never done it professionally. And he has this incredible technique, which is he doesn't paint with a brush, he paints with kitchen knives and oh, so cool. weapons, like throwing axes and swords and uh, other interesting things. And um, his art is beautiful expression of what's going on in his life and in the inside, but in a extremely abstract way. And I think Drip really helped him find a community of fans. Um, he's really prolific. I mean, he's making, I don't know, three to five pieces a day sometimes. Um, and so Drip is kind of his place, his home, I think, these days where he rewards people with his art. Um, but importantly, he's also found people who uh, are interested in paying for it and supporting him. And we have this patronage model called Say Thanks. And we're really helping him pay for his rent. And All right. Um, you know, that's, that's a beautiful thing we don't talk about that much in crypto, but there's a lot of creators that come to blockchains who don't have a platform in other places. They don't make money from what they create. Yeah. Uh, and I think we've been able to, to figure that out. Yeah, discoverability is really an issue, right? Because uh, in Web3, there is uh, such a, a saturation of information. Uh, a lot of people come here on the promise of uh, ownership, owner over your, ownership over your money, over your content, but it's hard for them to be discovered. So how does Drip do that uh, for the users? Yeah. And for uh, creators, I guess. Yeah, so I think there's a trade that gets made on Drip that's very different from Web2 platforms, right? Mm -hmm. On Web2 platforms, uh, you have like YouTube, for example, uh, you have a really long tail of creators, which means that um, I know Pedro at the foundation has done really good work on this. The top 1% of creators are maybe starting to earn money, um, and yet almost everyone else that comes there who maybe wants to uh, will be stuck with one, five, 100, 1,000 subscribers. And you really have to be at a big scale to tip the economies in your favor there and start to unlock monetization opportunities. Um, I think what we do is, uh, and the trade is that, uh, hey, let the crowd in on some of the early economics of your pieces, uh, and exchange, they'll support you, and, uh, even when you're very, very small. And what we've observed is that, I mean, this is where crypto has this superpower of like kind of community building, but letting the crowd into the fundamental economics of what's happening. Um, it's not a trade that I think every creator is going to want to make. But when you think about the fact that the long tail is the vast majority of the world's creators, um, I think this solution might be appealing to, um, to like millions. Yeah, so it, seem, it does seem like in order to be a profitable creator in Web3, not only do you have to express through your art, but you also have to, have to expose a part of yourself, right? Um, we were talking about um, some of the really prolific artists being more 
influencers, right? They can hold a crowd. It's not just their artistry. Yeah. And yeah. So one of the ways that I think crypto creators are very different is that um, when you mint a piece on chain and you give it to someone or you sell to someone, it's actually a direct to consumer uh, relationship, right? Mm -hmm. It's not intermediated by uh, a platform at all. Right? I mean, if you're a YouTube creator, you can't get the email addresses of the people that subscribe to your channel. Like, right. everything you do has to run through them. And in crypto, it's like right from the artist to the fan. And so there's a lot more uh, relationship building that happens. Um, and, and I think it, it, because of that, there's also a lot more um, engagement that you kind of have to do with your audience. And, and you know, so I think the modern artist that shows up on a blockchain today uh, looks much more like a YouTuber than, than not in a lot of mm -hmm. cases because they're having to do behind the scenes stuff about their work and um, they're having to like talk to their fans a lot. You know, they're not kind of hiding behind a gallery or broker. Yeah. Um, and that, uh, that's a very exciting thing. I, mean, I, I think directing consumer as like a business model for the internet has been an amazing and transformative force. Now Solana allows you to kind of think about that at the level of a content creator or an artist. An artist. Yeah. So uh, if I am a starry-eyed artist trying to like, you know, make something of myself in Web3, what are some advice that you give to the new creators coming into the scene? Uh, well, <laughs> apply for drip, d.rip slash creators, um, if you're interested. But honestly, uh, I think so much of it comes down to uh, individuals and kind of replying to people, yeah. getting into their DMs, sharing what you're doing um, proactively. Like I mentioned, I think uh, highlighting how you do your work is really important. I mean, one of the big challenges of the next age of humanity is going to be dealing with AI and, and kind of showcasing that, in fact, you did make this work, and, yeah. and here's how you did it. Um, so yeah, I think behind the scenes, building relationships, signing up for Drip, uh, all pretty good, pretty good starts. Cool. So, Vibu, I've been, as someone who's been following your career for the past like over a year, I see you also tweeting a lot. Um, so, I, I'm guessing that's a conscious choice of you tweeting a lot. Um, I guess my question is, do you consider yourself a influencer of sorts? <laughs> um, and, and, and is being an influencer necessary yeah. to run a good Web3 company? Yeah, I think there is. I think there's, some aspect of that. I mean, I, uh, we didn't prepare this question, but um, <laughs> like Web3 is overall a very vocal community. And uh, if you don't, if you're not proactive, either you're not going to be found or you're going to let people, you know, um, run away with a narrative that maybe is not the one that you really wanted. Yeah. So, I personally, when I came to, web, uh, to crypto from Web2, I felt like I had to be much more present, maybe in ways that make me a little uncomfortable uh, from my background, but um, I've enjoyed it. And, um, and yeah, and I think it uh, certainly, like, I, you said the word influencer, and I, I don't think of it that way, because the only thing I want to talk about is what I'm working on most of the time. Yeah. Um, so I'm supposed to be inf influencing drip, I guess. So it's, it's not, yeah. Uh, but I'm not trying to talk about other people's stuff usually. Mm. Um, <laughs> sorry about throwing you the curveball question. Uh, right. I was just curious. Um, so you've been building drip for over a year now, uh, and you've been iterating quite a bit. Um, what are some interesting learnings that you've discovered in your process of engaging uh, new users? Yeah, uh, I would say like the thing that we think about the most that isn't super obvious to people who follow us is um, how much incredible work we've done on um, civil resistance and, and sort of um, anti-fraud. We, uh, from the very beginning, our value prop, like I said, is very strong. We're giving people free things, things that have value on secondary marketplaces. And you know, for that reason, like, our growth potential is very large. Like lots of people want free stuff. Lots of people like to make free money. Um, so the question really does change to, well, how do you ensure you do it in a fair way yeah. and that people aren't taking advantage of the system? And so for nine months, really, we've um, engineered amazing uh, tools that I don't think anyone else really in, in blockchain is doing to help us understand how people use our products, 
what is a you know a real human or not a real human. Um, of course, uh, you know you kind of you can't have it both ways. You can't have the product be free and also uh, free of you know abuse. It's just uh, it's just very hard. But I think we've done you know 80, 90 percent of uh, of of the work that kind of needs to be done there. That's awesome. Um, building trust and like detecting fraud is super important in like trustless uh, environment. Uh, maybe final question from me is, there's a few more days of Breakpoint. Uh, what are you excited about for the next few days? Uh, I'm only excited about one thing, which is the Drip House presented by Phantom. Uh, tomorrow, doors open at 9.30 a.m. Uh, are you guys going? Starts at, yeah, starts at 10 a.m. It's way, uh, we approved th uh, like 1,200 people, and there's only 300 seats, so please come on time. Please come it's on gonna time. Be, yeah, it's going to be amazing. We have uh, a lot of breakthroughs to share with people on the product side and new channels, new experiences. And then you're going to be able to hear from like, all these amazing artists that, that we all fan out about. That's awesome. So no alpha today. I can't it's do all it. tomorrow. <laughs> I'll be there. OK, thank you so much, thank Vibu. Um, and thank you all for being here. Please check out Drip. What's the URL again? Uh, you just go to d.rip. d.rip. And we'll see you in Web3. Thanks. <laughs>